Oh, for us. Excellent. Uh, well, welcome everyone to our special meeting. Um, this is actually kind of our regular meeting. We just postponed our regular meeting because we have with us uh, some special guests, which we'll get to in a moment. So that makes it special. I'd like to call our meeting to order at 6.59 p.m. Nobody minds we're a minute early. Um, we do roll call. John, that's you, right? Sure. Dean Serwin? Yes. Bianca Richards? Present. Annie Chang Long? Present. Kenneth Gross? Here. F.J. Pratt? Here. Thank you. Okay. And our council liaison, council member Diana Mahmood, is uh, absent today. So we'll move on to agenda item uh, one, which is public comment. John, do we have any, we don't have anyone present. Do we have any public comment? Or Sally, are you making public comment? Not general. Okay. No public comment. Okay. So uh, well now we're back to our specialness. We have a presentation. We usually don't get to have presentations. Um, we have our library strategic planning consultants, uh, if they would care to introduce themselves. Yeah, absolutely. My name is J.R. Clanson. And I'm a consultant with Barry Dunn, who you all hired. Right. Yeah, who you all hired to uh, do the strategic plan. Yeah. Uh, I'm very excited to be here tonight. I have, um, you know, I've been with the company a while. Before then, I was most recently a uh, library services manager for Westminster, Colorado, for five years, uh, which is a, you know, first tier suburb of Denver, and uh, it was also a municipal system. So a lot of similarities. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My name is uh, Bill Kadir. Uh, people will still call me Abdi. <clears throat> I've been there then since college. I uh, did recruit me from college. And uh, what I like about Gordon is I had the opportunity to work with the city in every department. So I was box creation, library, finance, police, fire. So that keeps me busy and I, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. City manager and training. Yeah, Sorry. Right. Yeah. I said city manager and training. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because my my I I went to school for public uh public administration and my concentration was mainly local government. Excellent. And uh, I was uh, I went to, I was in school of government and mainly the professors. The curriculum was set up by the local government people, city managers, uh, directors. Mm -hmm. So and it's mandatory that they have to come and teach us. So, so we teach from the best and uh, working with the best. Yeah. Well, thank you. We have one more consultant on this team who couldn't make it tonight. Um, her name is Monique Zeisenhemi, uh, Dr. Monique Zeisenhemi, and uh, she's great. She's an expert in libraries as well. Uh, most recently, she was the assistant city manager of Palo Alto. And then before that, she was the library and community services director in Palo Alto and uh, has also been a director in several other communities in California for libraries. She's great. Excellent. Okay, well, take it away. Do you want them to introduce themselves? Yeah, oh, so this is the presentation. Yeah, we're on a Yeah, may I have the um, HDMI cable? Oh, yeah. And I'll hook up to the screen so you all can see. So much for well, see, but you're just going to share your screen. So you don't oh, so you need me to share? Okay. Right. Right? Yes. You're that correct. should work. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. We're, we're having technology. <laughs> yeah. We've moved this setup like three times today. Yeah. So we're just barely hanging on. By it's okay. It's right. a very nice TV, by the way. We're all That's learning. Yeah. yeah. You should see this camera. It's amazing. I love it. I have envy of this thing. Annie, can you see the Amazon? That's can where I got it. Screen? Is where you got it? Yeah. Amazon I can see. Yeah. I see the. I see the PowerPoint that's being shared. Okay, perfect. But the name is yes. next. Well, so thank you very much. So yeah, um, so as we just introduced our firm and our team, um, we're here to help you all with um, the strategic planning for the next five years for this library. This is an agenda of what we'll go over today. Um, after we're done doing introductions, we're going to talk about the overarching goals of this plan. Uh, you know, and then we're going to talk about our firm a little bit, how we approach strategic planning. We're going to review the process and the timeline we're going to have with the strategic planning with South Pasadena. And then we're going to really get to the meat of today's exercise, which is 
a discussion with you all about the strengths, challenges, and needs in South Pasadena. Can they see? Yeah, they can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as far as introductions go, um, you just met us, but we would love to know a little bit more about you, your perspectives. And so if you don't mind, could we go around and please tell me uh, who you are, how long you've been uh, in the South Pasadena community, um, and what your favorite uh, book of the moment is. <laughs> uh, Sally Pilby, a former city clerk, and um, been involved with friends on the board and working on a library tax measure right now for November. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm Helen Thank Torres. Again, I won't tell you exactly how long, but let's say it's <laughs> 60 plus years that I've been in the city and raised my four kids here and been very actively involved in the city and I am um, the president of the Friends. Great. And I'm uh, Bianca Richards and I'm a lifelong resident of South Pasadena. And uh, uh, I'm doing my second stint of the Library Board of Trustees and I'm also on the Measure L. Oh, yeah. And then yes, I, I, I'm, I'm a neighbor. I live directly um, across the street. And you great. met Ron Perchie is yeah. Yeah. yeah, her husband. Oh, and wow. the poet laureate is my husband. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he gave some great feedback earlier yeah. today. And favorite books, anything and oh. Pat Kitt. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Anything. I'm going through reading all of her books. So. Great. Mm. Thank you. You guys didn't say your favorite yeah. books? Yeah. They already heard mine. Yeah, yeah. we heard mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We did the same. Oh, been here. <laughs> Hi, I'm F.J. Pratt. I've been in South Pass uh, 25 years. I've been on the board maybe all of four months. Oh. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. And a uh, book I just finished, uh, Perfect Summer Reading by Tom Parada. Tracy Flick can't oh, win. Uh, you like it? Yes. Yeah, no, it's a good one. Yeah. Tracy Flick can't win. Well, anything yeah. Tom Parada. Tom Parada, I totally anything, agree. Anything he, the movie Election, yeah. this is the sequel of Tracy Flick in yeah. the 40s. Nice. Yeah, so that's the one I have. Uh, Dean Sirwin, uh, I'm the current uh, Library Board of Trustees president. I've lived in South Pass for about 18 years now. Yeah. Uh, raised my kids here. Um, and uh, very active. I'm also on the Measure L uh, committee and have been on with Sally uh, and, and Bianca and Thanks, Ellen, often yeah. Ellen uh, on most of the revenue measures in town, um, schools and city, uh, involved with uh, several other groups in the city, Spark, the South Pasadena Arts Council. Um, that's uh, actually looking, I think we're setting up a, a book reading signing uh, oh. program that's going to get started soon. Um, favorite book, you know, right now I'm, I'm re listening to um, Iron John or Robert Boyd. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm in a men's group and it's kind of our textbook, <laughs> if you will. Iron John, but, yeah, yeah, it's a, uh, it's an interesting work. Um, so going through it again is a, a little different. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. I'm Ken Gross. I've been uh, on the board since uh, last March. I've joined with, uh, with, along with FJ. Been in South Pass since the late 1980s. Uh, the kids grew up here. They've left South Pass, but my wife and I have stayed. And uh, favorite recent books, uh, probably Gentlemen in Moscow and uh, The Men in the United States. Oh, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. It's great. Well, thank you for introducing yourself. It's always oh, I can go too. This is sorry, I'm on the phone. Yeah, that's okay. I know. Sorry, I couldn't be there. I, um, my name is Annie Chang Long. I, I have three kids, and we couldn't get babysitting tonight, so I that's why I'm here. Um, but I have three children that are here, um, growing up in South Pass. Two of them are at the local elementary school. One of them will be there soon. Um, I volunteer on a local PTA at the elementary school lead one of the Cub Scout dens and um, try to be really involved in the community too. I've been on the board for, this is my third year and I've lived in the city for uh, five years and grew up um, locally here in Southern California. And my um, book, book that I'm trying to work through right now very slowly in my spare time is When Breath Becomes Air by um, I think Paul Kalanithi. Um, but my kids go to the library a lot. And so a lot of my time is just spent um, getting the latest books for them. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Annie. Well, thanks all. Like I said, it, it's fun to get to, to know the perspectives, where you all are coming from <clears> as we gather this feedback. 
Um, and obviously you're on the board of trustees for the library, so you're passionate about this institution and care deeply about, about it. So let's get right into it. Um, so we're gonna be meeting today for about an hour. Um, and so there's a few things I wanna get through. So plan purpose, this is straight from the RFP. Um, five years, inform allocation of uh, the library's resources. And it should, and this last sentence is really, I think, uh, indicative of just how much um, the library currently cares about getting input from the community. It should reflect the concerns and needs of all library stakeholders. You know, we met with all of the staff, not just library leadership, all of the staff um, for three and a half hours uh, the other day. And it was a really, or yesterday rather, and uh, it was a really amazing session. And I think it just speaks volumes about the leadership here that all staff was included in this process. And so, and again, we're just meeting with an incredibly diverse amount of, of community stakeholders and really trying to get perspectives. So definitely, uh, reflecting the concerns of all the people in this community is, is, is paramount. So a little bit about our process and some of our values that we bring to these types of projects. Uh, collaboration, absolutely. We believe in working with you and with uh, staff, and we tailor the plans specifically to the needs of the community. Real world experience, um, the consultants that are on this team have, we're real world practitioners. We run library systems. We've worked in local governments. Um, and we can help bring that experience to, to your project. And then living document. We do this in two ways. We create a strategic plan, and then we have an implementation workshop with staff where we, where we basically say, this is how you use this document. Uh, and then we create a document that is able to be adaptable to changing situations. And we work with staff to make sure they understand how they can change this document for changing situations. Um, and then innovation and excellence, it's just our core values. It's what we live by. So we will. So how we create this plan, we spend a lot of time learning about the community. Um, that's where we at right now. We look through every document we can get our hands on, uh, budget documents, uh, the past strategic plan. Uh, we look at demographics. We do a pretty thorough demographics analysis. We look at a ton of information that the library provides to us about their operations, their user scope, that, that sort of thing. Um, and so we, we do all of that to set the context and frame, framework for, for the environment we're working in. We also listen a lot. We talk to a lot of people. We gather a ton of information. Um, but that information that we gather is then synthesized and uh, aggregated and, and all those other things. Then we come up with themes that then guide how we move forward. Um, and again, we work hand in hand to do the whole time. Okay, so what is our process and what is the timeline here? So the timeline for this project is about a four to five month project. We're looking to finish this around the October, November timeframe. Uh, we have this broken out into four different phases. Phase one, coordination. That's where we do a lot of the administrative stuff on the front end of the project to uh, set, it, set, it, set it up. That's where we have preliminary meetings with Kathy and her staff. Uh, that's where we start uh, getting information. It's where we start reviewing documents and all the information I just talked about. We also start uh, doing preliminary um, engagement, which is what we're doing right now. Phase two, analysis and engagement. That's where we really start to process a lot of the information we've been gathering. We have a pretty robust um, outreach campaign going during this phase through a website called Social Pinpoint, which we'll talk about later. Uh, we also have additional stakeholder meetings, uh, community stakeholder groups, and we'll meet with staff um, during this time. Phase three, phase three is school setting and visioning. That's where we've collected a lot of the input and we're really starting to get down into, okay, so what does this mean for actually having action items? What is that? What is what are the actual things we're doing based upon all the information we gather? Phase four, strategic plan development. That's where we turn it into a beautiful document and a well-organized, beautiful document. And we believe that's important because it makes the document accessible. Something that you look at that's pleasing and makes sense to you is something you will read. And uh, during this time, this is also when we do our implementation workshop with staff. 
All right, so this is how we funnel things down um, through the various information sessions that we have with different groups. So we start with community perspectives, uh, strengths and challenges, and vision and value concepts as they relate to South Pasadena as a whole, not just the library, the South Pasadena community. And we start broadly, okay? And th this top box here, this dark blue one, that's what we're going to spend most of our time talking about today. The next layer, the next, next layer we drill down after that is we then start talking about what is the role of the library in enhancing the strengths or helping to mitigate the challenges we're facing in South Pasadena. And when, that's where we start identifying kind of what is the connection between what the library can do and the issues or strengths that South Pasadena has. From there, where we go, is that's where we start talking about mission, vision, vision, values, kind of those broader things. What do, what, what do we do now? Where do we want to be? Um, and then what are the values that guide us there? And when we've identified the green, then we go down to the purple, and that's where we actually start getting a list of actions, um, how we're going to know we succeeded, what the objectives of those actions are, and potential strategies for getting there. Okay? Great. So now that we're through that, we get to actually hear you all. And so um, we're going to, um, the first thing we're going to talk about is just the, your community perspective on South Pasadena. And what I'd like to do is I've got two questions here, which are what comes to mind when you think about South Pasadena and what are some of its community values? And the way we'll do this is really rapid fire. Um, just say a word or a simple sentence. Um, and as you say it, Abdi is going to be capturing it and then just go one after another. Um, because we do have uh, one person who is online, you know, we'll make sure we get Annie's feedback too. Um, but yeah, let's go. So what comes to mind when you think about South Pasadena? Small town. Small town. Community. Community. School. Schools. East Coast. East Coast. Interesting. I go more Midwest. But that's yeah. Yeah. Okay, maybe more Midwest. I like it. Tree, tree line. Tree line. Mm -hmm. It's accessible. Accessible. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Mm. Equity. Or Mayberry. 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 Equity. Mayberry. Equity and Mayberry. Mm -hmm. it's highly, it's uh, educated. Yeah, an educated population. Educated. Educating population. Yeah. Active. Active okay. preservation. Yeah, that's a good one. Preservation. Yeah. What does preservation mean? Retaining, retaining the old. Retaining the old. While modernizing. Yeah, while modernizing. I like that. It's a good way to put it. It's getting more diverse. Getting more diverse. Okay. Is Slowly. it what? What kind of diversity? Uh, I would. Uh, if, ethnic, ethnic, racial, yeah. ethnic, yeah. racial, economic. Economic, economic diversity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We see it here in our library. In the library, you see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. With the programs mm -hmm. offered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they have ethnic, uh, economic, economic, uh -huh. economic uh -huh. race, mm -hmm. religious. Mm -hmm. We're just generally acquiring more uh, diversity to our populace. Generally, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, I like that Annie said equity because that's that's something that a lot of people in town can feel strongly about. Yeah. Accessible even by people that don't live in the community. You see a lot yeah. of people from not the community that make use of the park or whatever. Mm -hmm. Farmers market. Yeah. 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 Was getting Farmers mm -hmm. market. Did you get over there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I have a, I have a bag of Concord grapes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not gonna throw it away. Uh, yeah. music. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. music. No, no, but town music. We have a, a music festival. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, uh, entertainment industry. There's a lot mm -hmm. of yeah, a lot of that. that. Uh, close to downtown. Mm -hmm. High housing costs. There's a very yeah. increasing yeah. gap right now on sales, and people are choosing to live here versus other cities. Um, and yeah. it's a very competitive housing market. Yeah, very competitive. Rents uh, squeezing people out. Rents is squeezing mm -hmm. people out. Mm -hmm. I think there's some uh, class. Classism, elitism that sure. comes across versus uh, homeowners versus uh, mm -hmm. renters. Mm -hmm. Sure. So there's a, a little bit of. Is there tension there? A little. Okay. A little. Is that a perceived tension or is it a real tension? Well, I'm a renter, mm -hmm. so 
mine is real yeah. perception. Yeah. Because I'm I'm a renter. Sure. And you know, I it's it's very interesting too because just because you're a renter doesn't mean you're a low income renter. Exactly. Like these are very, very high income around here. here. Right. Right. Renter, right. Educated renter. Exactly. renter. Exactly. Exactly. There's the point I'm making is like a lot of renters' rent payments are actually higher than, than, more than my kids than are. Yes. You know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I talked to some of. Yeah, my rent is higher than some people's mortgage. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And you know, it's very interesting too because um, you know, some of the other groups have been talking about you know, all the new households that potentially could be coming to mm. the community and, and what that could mean for mm -hmm. development. Yeah. Yeah. Development. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we also have a lot of, um, a lot of Minnesota kind of thoughts. Okay. Oh, no. Well, train. We'll yeah, train. 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 I am, I'm a little curious. Um, so why East Coast or then you countered Midwest? It's the tree line street. Because a tree line I mean, it feels like and it doesn't feel California. Yeah, in the homes. I mean I grew up in the East Coast in yeah. Philadelphia and homes remind me of some of the neighborhoods. Yeah. yeah. And that's why the film companies come yeah. and that's, pick yeah, any exactly. environment. Yeah. It, yeah. Just, so it should film, be Midwest, filming. it should be East Coast. Lots, lots, the of filming, like that. lots, lots of uh, um uh uh Location. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, location. Location. Sure. Yeah. Through city, so we have to deal with traffic. If yeah, you're yeah. A, an through east, city. west, north, mm -hmm. north, south through mm -hmm. city. Right. So, and that impacts our uh, traffic. Yeah, that's a really good point. So I think we're more integrated with LA than the rest of San Gabriel Valley because we're the first town city. after right. you get in the middle of the city. So we're sure, a, for, uh, like a first tier suburb of LA or first tier city. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. LA City, let me be a minute and a half away from the schools. Yeah, yeah, they get, they get uh -huh. to other places. Yeah, like we're we're, we're a, um, the close proximity to LA city limits. What's the, the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, I can't think. Commuter. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're a commuter city. Commuter mm -hmm. city. Yeah. Well, more There's a lot of um, local government. There's a lot of local government leaders that um, live here, county department heads, city department heads yeah. for LA that, you know, they a lot of young families are choosing to, to live here. here. Yeah, he's, he's right down the street. The state yes. Yes. Health yes. director. Yes, a lot of government employees. A lot of famous, famous people, people. A lot of famous here. people live here. Yeah. The Dodger announcer lives Joe here. Joe Davis. Joe yeah. Davis. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mark Landrell. Mark, yeah. The Dodgers from historian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the, uh, the, well, actually, I guess Andy doesn't live in town. He lives in San Marino, but he works in town. Right. Who's that? Lakers photographer. Oh. Uh, art and art. Art. Oh, art. Daryl Arts. Gates, when he was police chief, I think he lived here. I drive That's right. I talking about that. I, I used to see him run around here. Yeah. 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 yeah, right. Okay. Let's shift it now to kind of values. Um, We've talked, we've heard a few, but let's hear a few more. We've heard, what have we heard? Education, mm -hmm. uh, family, family, equity, diverse, family. family. Yeah. yeah. Uh, preservation is yeah, preservation. Preservation and retention. We can't what we have. Preservation has to do with the environmental. Uh, no, no. Uh, more uh, buildings. Cultural. Yeah. Cultural. Cultural and historic historic buildings. Historic historic buildings. Historic buildings. Yeah. Historic building. What about environment, though? Yeah, I was going to say uh, environmental are, justice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, environmental justice. Is about we're, we're environmentally conscious. We have a, a new uh, uh, ordinance about uh, now not using electric uh, lawn equipment. Blowers, yeah. We're, yeah. We're, yeah. we're not using gas. Yeah. Oh. All our landscape contractors right. have to use electric. Electric, that's oh. really cool. Yeah, they've, our got mayor these, is very yeah, they've got these big, kind of right on um, quiet. I see him some yeah. this morning. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's nothing right. better than when your neighbor's contractor comes at 8 a.m. to yeah. start mowing the lawn. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We do uh, we do get a peacock. Peacock. Yeah. Yeah. Parrots. And the parrots. Yeah, the parrots. The parrots. And, <laughs> yeah, Abdi loves the parrots. Loves the parrots. <laughs> you can have them, Abdi. Yeah. <laughs> Take them I like, home. I like them. Yeah, it makes, it, makes it different. It's different. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, like Engelman Oaks, I don't think Engelman Oaks grow in a very narrow band. They don't go too much further east from here in San Marino. Yeah, there okay. are two types of Engelman Oaks and Live Oaks. Wow. Okay, so Engelman Oaks. Oaks, oh, tree. Yeah. Well, I think our library is about Our library, yeah. yeah. And I think education. Education. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah. And and all and, the, and we have a wide uh, variety of uh, uh, religious affiliations here, so mm -hmm. it's very diverse when it comes to that. Yeah. And then I think it, uh, that I, don't, I don't think I would agree with that. There's not a synagogue in well, a few miles. Well, uh, maybe, maybe can, but yeah. so, no. so maybe diversity with yeah. uh, people, but not necessarily with buildings. Mm -hmm. Right, not with the buildings. No, the no. Of people are diverse, but there aren't diverse locations. Yeah. Okay. We have, we have several different Catholic or Christian denominations. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it ends there. Right. Sure. Okay. I think families yeah, value and, being well rounded here. There's a lot of families who are anti screen time and just really wanting their kids. Sports is really big locally. So there's a lot of value of um, extracurricular things. Like all the kids here are just mm -hmm. super busy on the weekends with families and it stands out versus yeah. other communities locally. And volunteer support of the schools yeah, and all school activities, PTA, mm -hmm. the booster club. And community we services, have we have very healthy parks and recreation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Bingo. Yeah. yeah. Bingo, Tiger Bingo. We talked about that. Fun zip, Tiger Bingo. Tiger Bingo. Our bingo. Oh, God, yes. Oh, yes. That will. Yeah, is that the um, fundraising thing? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm just blown away by that. So <laughs> they, make, they make a ridiculous amount. I know. It's crazy. Crazy. like the philanthropy in this community is special. Like you guys are generating special amounts of money. Yeah. That, and well, and we do. We do have. Um, you know that we, the, we activate on our values. Yeah. Activate on our values. I like that. Yeah. Because that's that's why we have staff. That's why we have Spark. That's why we have Tiger Bingo. That's why we have mm -hmm. Library Board of Trustees. And in fact, that's why NPTA. we have I think, more more commissions per capita than yeah. any other any other part right. of the city. Yeah, we just heard you went from fourteen to twelve. They had yeah. a huge cut down too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we, that shows that we have a sense of uh, yeah. involvement that mm -hmm. we value. Uh, we, people get involved in the city, and they're very uh, passionate about issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they get they get involved and they yeah. want their voices heard, which is good. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we do have a, a burgeoning value of thriftiness. Yeah, uh, there's a, 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 a an emphasis on uh, making uh, government accountable. Mm -hmm. Do you guys want to talk more about that government accountability? What's that stemming from? Financial. There, there was some issues with. Um, uh, lack of auditing of the uh, the budget uh, sure. that's been caught up on now, and uh, depending on who you talk to, it was much ado about nothing, or it was a major uh, red flag. Sure. Has that? Um, I'm trying to think of. So, how is that reflected or related to the library's operations? Do you think? Um, well, hopefully it won't be. Yeah. Right. Hopefully it won't be. Yeah. Hopefully it means that people are attuned to what's going on, have some more trust in the government, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Wanting to know, wanting to know that the, the government are being good stewards, financial yes. stewards, but not necessarily saying we're going to take back. Right. Yeah. So I think there's a big divide between younger new families and folks that have been here for a long time because a lot of um I'm I'm involved involved in a lot of things and no one is tracking or knows any of the um, citywide things that are happening um, because there's just a big divide between folks who have kids and families um, and what they're involved in versus others, which is unfortunate, but hopefully that changes too. Yeah, and that's definitely it does when, they, when their kids get older. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good point that Annie, Annie brings up. It's like um, uh, a lot of us can get involved in stuff when we retire or our right. kids have grown. Right. And Annie's right when you uh, like uh, there is where you don't some of us don't even know the younger families with kids. Sure. So there is kind of that right. Yeah, there, there's a there's a split. You have the younger families are involved in PTA, they're involved in uh, AYSO and Little League Scouts. Um, and Scouts. Yeah. And then the people with older kids or adult children get involved more in city government and, and 
the library and the concerts and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like that. I mean, everywhere. Go to a uh -huh. honest meeting. Go to a Rotary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And yeah. and you know, it, it it comes out in you know our values. We do do things based on them. We have concerts in the park. We yeah. have our free movies at, at the museum. Uh, we have a, a, a pretty robust uh, farmer's market, you know, so we do have those things and we have great parks that we're, you know, slowly but surely uh, refurbishing. That's great. But it, it, it shows a lot about our city, uh, concerts in the parks, movies in the park, the farmer's market, a lot of even the library events, the majority of the people that attend are not, they don't live in the city. Mm, that's where so that's that a good here. reputation that right. surrounding young people mm -hmm. or all kinds of people will come. Like we did the yeah. concerts in the park. Uh, right. There was the majority of people weren't even from South Pasadena. And the park so eclectic, the events that are going on there, you people teaching others how to tightrope walk. And you got the, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. They've been here to sit up and kids are doing slap shots yeah. and then soccer somewhere else and then Pilates classes and, right. and yeah. all at the same time. And then there's the dog park. Mm -hmm. well, I tell you what, I, I work with park guys a lot and what this lawn looks like right now is like what every park guy dreams their park is going to look like. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just you, you dream of having that many, that diversity of families, mm -hmm. of ages, yeah. of people. And, they're, and they're, that, that's enjoying. intentional. Mm -hmm. um, the, it's considered a park. The, the, the grounds that we're yeah. on, and as I've said, that tree out there, yes. there, there is not a family in town that their children didn't play in the right. of that tree. Right. So that's where that's the connectivity of our community. Mm -hmm. And right. um, we the have uh, there's there's a club that I'm involved in in town called the Onyanta Club, and we were we had a board meeting last night. We were talking about one of our new board members. His grandfather was a board member <laughs> of the club. It's a, it's a, we're 100 years right. old this year, so right. there's, there's that kind of continuity. And when we gave we gave out a scholarship, and the um, the the people introducing the teachers of the year were talking about how they had taught one of them had <laughs> taught the parent of one of our award winners <laughs> and had worked we know all that, and had right? been principal, you know, their principal when they were in elementary school was sitting in the audience. Oh. So there's a, a connectivity that uh, mm. and, and tradition that continues on. You know, we have two people at this table who are lifetime residents of this city. Yeah. That's amazing. It's, it's not that ago. common in Southern California where old is 20 years. Right. You know, something that's been around 20 years is considered old. Somebody. They're coming back and then living in the house they were raised in. Yeah, yeah. a lot of that. Yeah, a lot of that in this town. I think. Um, is there intersectionality between younger folks and older folks so they can communicate and talk? I think that's the challenge. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. the challenge. Yeah. But but we're we we are up for it. A good example would be the women's club. Mm -hmm. We have a vibrant women's club in town that had been skewing a little bit more sedentary. Yeah. So some of the younger members said, you know what, we're going to be two, we're going to do two halves right. for our club. Right. So they have a day club and a night club. And the day club is a little bit more laid back, casual, slow. And the night, the night club is a night club. It's, <laughs> it's a little bit more lively and, and exciting. They enjoy it. So you get both groups who are together and separate at the same time. Yeah. And I think that's how we have with our city with, we have the young parents. But Annie's a young parent, but she's here. Right. Well, and that I love that term, the the intersectionality and the integration of those mm -hmm. families. You know, I hear like going back to Annie's comment, and it's similar to other comments that we've heard, which is um, how do the new residents get integrated in? Mm -hmm. Because they're coming, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether or not it's two thousand new units or mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, for, for whatever reason, no longer are able to live in South Pasadena, you know, new families are going to come in. And so, uh, well, one of the, yeah. one of the things that is a, I don't, I don't mean to sound Pollyannish, but we're sitting in it. Yeah. This is where everybody comes. Yes. You have little kids, you come to the library, you play in the, in the, in the tree, yes. you come and you do story time, you get books and then your kids yeah. come after school. The kids co come from the, uh, the, middle school and they come and hang out here and meet here and then right. go other places and then you get older and you come to the restoration concerts and you come and you know right. check out books or 
yeah. from book club. This is it. And, you know, we'll get to roles of the library in a few weeks, but, you know, already you could imagine maybe intersectionality is one of those key roles of the library for this community. Very much so. Um, all right, so let's keep moving because I want to be good to your time. And this next one is pretty important. So now we're going to talk about, it's, it says strengths and challenges. Really what I want to talk about is strengths, challenges, and needs. And um, because we're on an abbreviated time frame, uh, I really want to make sure we're hitting needs first with, with the time I have with you all. Certainly if there's strengths, we can talk about them too. And But, but what I really want to talk about here are specific strengths and needs as they relate to groups of people or just in general, it can also be the facility. But I want you to say, if you can identify who it's affecting and then what the challenge or the need is, okay? So I know modernization okay. on all levels, both facility so it's as well as the technology. Um, the technology and the accessibility to digital content inside and outside of the library okay. that I think impacts all users. Sure. Space. So, so that's all wrong. Space. Yeah, I think. Technology, building, <laughs> space. Uh, yeah. space. Yeah. That's why I sent you Brian. Yeah. No, that's, man, that's, that's, I'm 100%. What, which one are you particularly um, well, just passionate You about? know, as much as we love a small town community that we grow through technology and accessibility with our resources. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I agree. Yeah. The library can be the, the the old medieval market bazaar. This is where everyone comes and congregates, so it gets to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. So there, I think, I don't know if I'm talking blasphemy here, but a, a lesser emphasis mm -hmm. on physical media mm -hmm. and more emphasis on accessibility and mm -hmm. interface with digital media as well as community engagement and right. involvement centered around this facility. Right, and that's not blasphemy. I mean, those are the types of questions libraries all over the country are asking. You know, do we need the same footprint for physical materials right. we needed uh, even 10 years ago? Mm -hmm. And, you know, basically with the library, it's very interesting, but the library is 100 things to 100 different types of people. And you have to pick what are the 20 things I can actually fit in this library. Mm -hmm. Any one service the library provides, even the collection, probably isn't enough to justify its existence in the community if you're from a pure cost benefit analysis. But when you start adding up all the other things that the library does for the community, even just being a space that they can come in and hang out in uh, or gather in, um, that's when you start to really find the value of of the library, it's true value. It's the sum of all those different services to all those different people. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with asking the question, hey, is there as much demand for physical materials as there used to be? Um, the answer might surprise you. There's still people who enjoy browsing a collection. Oh, sure. Uh, but, but they're also, you know, that circulation numbers might be going down. Maybe there's more demand for activity spaces in the spaces that used to hold bookshelves. Some places have realized that because the value is put on space and having a pleasing space to be in, they lower the bookshelves so that you can have more light. It's more wide open. It looks nicer, but then you also have cut your capacity for collections. And, and there's, so I know I'm getting specific here, but all I mean to say is don't worry about it being blasphemy. Um, now is the time to talk about it. That's it, why I said it. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, wow. it's, um, please, you know, it's and a very much one more than I'm going to run the restroom. Um, yeah. To everybody else. The, I see a need for using that space and bringing people in for educational and entertainment purposes okay. that can be integrated together. Yes. So you can come in and learn and that we have the facility, we have the space, and we have the technology to be able to offer those kinds of things. I'm not saying we're becoming a school, right. but there's educational and entertaining programming that we adopt and, and apply. Perfect. Uh, whatever has been said, uh, it's not gonna be attached to a name. So whatever you just like, we're not gonna say 
Uh, Jane say that, or Kenneth say that. So I, I didn't expect that you were. I just was saying, I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to run the rest of No, 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 I understand. That. Uh, we, that's what we yeah, do. Yeah, it's a ground yeah. rule I usually tell people. Yeah. It's like yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I think, uh, I, I don't know if we're going to talk about challenges, but one of the biggest yeah. challenges is that we're where the physical space of this library, I, like, I don't know if you guys, how do you guys, did you drive, drive up here? Did you park? Yeah. Was it a challenge? Well, we got here early enough it yeah. wasn't, but it's very easy to see how it could be. Right, and, then, <laughs> and on a yeah. Thursday you can see that yeah. we're in it. We're in a very, um, exactly. we're in a very tight, you know, uh, uh, an active neighborhood. And in the next, I would say, five years, we're going to be a very active neighborhood with the development. And so I think that's going to impact the library. And then I, I've always, I've always felt, you know, right next door is the senior center, and I just don't. I think. Uh, there's, you know, a metaphorical and a physical wall right. between the senior center mm -hmm. and the library, which I would like to break right. down, break down right. that yep. wall. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I Watch think it, seniors just be all isolated. Yeah, and like I think that. I think we can do like going back to like Annie's point. I think we can have this uh, inner relationship with uh, the old, the new. And bring in more uh, young and older people interacting more. There's a, there's a little bit of separation, um, but that uh, that that can be a strength and a challenge and a need. All yeah. of that is just the the, phys the, the physicality. Physical. Of right. It. You know, you're talking about if you're if we're really. I mean, we know we're getting those two developments, right? If the plan is that there's going to be another long term 2,200 households coming into South Pasadena, you know. We can look at the library right now and look at usage right now and start wondering is this physical space enough? Uh, not enough now. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I think it's definitely a challenge. It's definitely starting to talk to need. Um, and it's absolutely appropriate to bring it up and for us to record it. And you're not the first one to have said it. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, uh, it's a valid concern. It, it, it's hard to know what. People coming with the new development, what their needs are, and, yes. and it just goes to the bigger picture of keeping us vital. Right. And what kept what made us vital five years ago is going yes. to be different make right. us vital five years from now. I don't know right. how you figure that out. How do you engage with the new people moving in? You know, yeah, because the communities that come in, uh, how do you how do you find out what their needs are? How are you engaging with them? How do you what what resources do you have at the library to say, hey? This is South Pasadena. What kind of uh, like what demographic they would be like younger groups? Right. 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 I yeah. take long walks with my dog on Saturday. I always come by here. Yeah. There's so many reading programs with kids. Yeah. It's like it's a real uh, source of pride that this is happening. Yeah. You know, you know, on a Saturday, and there's yeah, all these workers and kids that are out there oh, reading, right. and they're all in groups. And so I um, you know, for me, I'm uh, I think I know we're modernizing, but I think. Uh, Obviously, the point of entry for reading is, is the tactile thing with yes. little kids. And I'm one of those old guys that I still get the physical paper and yeah. I'm still, yeah. I bought the Tracy book. I came to my house. I cannot. So I, I always want to have one foot in this Any world that we have now. And then obviously, beyond the body, green team, it's like we've got to, you know, move forward how we can, you know, get a bigger footprint digitally and still be, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of it is the, the digital footprint yeah. is. Ethers, so it doesn't take right. away from the physical, yeah. but maybe, like I was saying, opening up a little bit more physical space to to have those types of programs. Right. Um, yeah, for the younger, that. I think yeah, for I younger think, fa families with um younger children who are in elementary school, at least, and I'm not as familiar with the middle school and the high school, they rely on the library because teachers and the school librarian actually points to the library, and so I'd say yeah. like you know those um, families with younger children specifically just you know need the programming need places to connect with each other there's a lot of the um, community space here is heavily programmed so it's like parking even having availability to get a gazebo at the park is like a competitive thing because folks from outside the city come here to rent it because um, it is so lovely in the community that a lot of local folks that don't live here also use it too and so I definitely think the space issue is just going to continue to be a challenge and I also just wanted to name that I think 
to me, from what I see, there's a growing um, group of residents that don't speak English as a first language. And I really just love the fact that part of our, um, um, what we have at the library are those um, different resources in Korean, Chinese, Spanish, you know, other languages. I don't know if you know, but we have a dual language immersion program in two of our three elementary schools, one being Spanish and one being Mandarin. And so there's a significant portion of those students who, um, even if Chinese or Spanish is not their first language, they are like, their parents are heavily relying on resources sorry, to get through teaching their kids. It's um, a heavy burden for them. And so, you know, I, I always wonder um, how much they use library resources to support the, the things happening in their dual language immersion classes. But Andy, some of the school just made me think it's been so many years since I've been in the high school, but I recall high school is a library too, right? Is there any overlap or is there any coordination we need to be doing? Oh, that's, with the that's, high school? A, that's an interesting one. The, uh, the superintendent of schools wants to try and do something like that. So we um, we do have in the community task force that we, we have that Kathy has helped arrange, we do have someone from, I forget, is she the superintendent of education? Just the superintendent of curriculum. Of curriculum. Of curriculum thank you. Yeah. And so we do have, she, she's sharp as a tack. She is very sharp. And so, yes, we are, we are talking with the schools and getting their input on this. Um, she's, um, just today she put forward ideas of, you know, how do you better integrate uh, the municipal library with the school library. Um, obviously, uh, you know, it's good to have those talks, right? It's good to have the discussions and, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think there's any answers that were presented today, but certainly it was the fact that they're there and participating and actually really participating is a great sign. I think they see the value mm -hmm. of having the central yes. library. So. Yeah, I've done this before um, in other communities where the person from the school district has no interest in being there, clearly was told to be there by their boss and is not not participating, not providing any meaningful <clears throat> feedback. So um, again, our yeah. community, and you may have already learned this, the yeah. schools and our community are completely intertwined yeah so the reason cool. the reason that we have the high property value that yeah. we do is because of our school yeah, yeah. well it's good to it it's does in other communities that. that provide the same physicality yeah to los angeles that we do but we've got this yeah and that's amazing and, and just one other thing i think uh uh we're right we said it earlier the south pasadena is kind of uh surrounded very in la urban and we're very close to the metro and so I think the library then tends to a lot more people can access. And I think a lot of libraries are experiencing, you know, the unhoused population. And I think we can't ignore that. And it would be, you know, it'd be nice to uh, have more maybe social services close by that we that could be dealt with when we do have uh, homeless situations. So, and 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 that's that's nothing new to any libraries, you know. And, so I think more and more that's what libraries are. Uh, it's it's a place for anybody to come to, you know. So that overcrowds like just the space, the bathrooms. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that's, that's an excellent, excellent point. Mm -hmm. How can we, how can we, without becoming a shelter, uh, provide mm -hmm. services mm -hmm. for our unhoused population mm -hmm. uh, in a in a a library centric manner. So they're not coming here just to get out of the cold or the rain or the right. heat, but making the facilities available in a way that is not going to be disruptive to our, our schools and children and, and everyone else. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, uh, I get it, yeah. yeah. Did, did anybody mention the staff? I think that part of this should definitely be in terms of working on um, the facilities. Uh, for the staff so that they are uh, supportive to them mm -hmm. and welcoming so that we can consistently retain our quality uh, staff. Yeah. Because we have amazing staff, but if we're not providing them with a physical um, physical place mm -hmm. that is conducive to their work, mm -hmm. we're not going to go to them. Yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. no. Um, Let's make sure we're capturing that. So, you know, I think we need 
uh, environment. Physical yeah. environment. Physical environment as well as general workplace, yeah. you know, orientation so that this is a, a place that they want to come to work and sure. not just get a paycheck. Yeah. And, you know, it, yeah, I like that. And certainly there's there's definitely appreciation for staff here. Uh, there's people who are telling their stories of how, you know, they're the librarian and their life is beloved and they still bring it up and remember it. So, made up. Yeah, made up. Made up. I didn't oh, want to speak. Made up. Yeah, so uh, that would be. Yeah. I love it. And, and not to just keep their names, but we have an excellent historian uh, in Olivia here. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. And Olivia. if we can, um, one of the things I think we have a need for because of what we talked about our values with tradition and preservation mm -hmm. is. Um, making our historical uh, records more accessible. Okay. I like that. And that might involve a lot more digitization. Yeah. So that we don't have to make a, a physical place where people can go and rummage through, but having those things available yeah. digitally. Yeah, digitally. Yeah. That's a good one. And then digitization. Yeah, digitization is very important. There's a county that did a, a park. They have a QR, QR code, mm -hmm. and then they send out a scan and they cannot visually see it. Oh, it was the place how it is right no, now. Oh, so. we, we had a, a scout through an Eagle Scout project like yeah. down in South El Monte. Mm -hmm. That's what really Another cool. example was uh, New Zealand just implemented uh, young kids volunteer to all the course time, and that tends to be recorded. And when they get old, they get their time back. But the new future, the younger generation, yeah. they come back. Mm. That's, what so I think. that's what I was talking about, intersectionality. And we will mm. also help, how can we utilize uh, reading? You know, mm. people who teach kids reading. A teacher who retires, he may sit at home feeling lonely, but come here now, and teach feeling, okay, we need someone in the library. Teach the Again, kids reading, if, we have, if we have a little more space that could be dedicated right. to that kind of community education, entertainment, yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to put a word in your mouth. No, no, no. no. We did. We did oh, I, I love governments. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're mentioning that um, the staff, the employees, there are just a limited number of FTEs, and then there's a lot of part time uh, clerical people. And um, it's really uh, such a waste of all everyone's time because there's hundreds and hundreds of recruitment of applications that come in. And um, there's a limited uh, time that these people will stay here because it can only work is it 15 hours a week, because 18, 18 hours, because then the city would have to pay right. uh, uh, benefits. Yeah. And so, and so Kathy and the other people in administration are just spending half of their time recruiting yeah. Yeah. and interviewing, and then they might interview like 50 people, and then. Not one of them accepted, or they only stay until they get a job that has benefits. I mean, it's and the library can't do anything about that because it's a city policy. Well, it's a state. It's a state policy. And education well, too. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we're putting our money in in the wrong place. I mean, we're putting money in all the administrators to try to work with this. Not really uh, helping. Mm -hmm. uh, just. And we're not giving these people any benefits right. to make them want to stay. So non-benefited positions, <laughs> retention. And it is hard to um when you have an when you have an operation that operates outside of normal business hours, yeah. Staffing is difficult. Yeah. You can't have it doesn't work out it's seven days a week full time. Or seven right. days. Right. Like if if, if you have, if you had all full-time employees with that type of operation, then you would have the library filled with people during the middle of the middle of the day. Um, but that's not to say that you can't have a lot of part time. It's just one thing that does contribute to the need to have part time, but you can still have benefited part time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not here, not here. How how when someone starts, how a can full time, how long will they have to be to develop up the benefit? If you're full time, you get them immediately. If you're yeah. part time, then you never no, get them. Uh, not at all. You get them when you move to another you job. You get a little bit of sick leave. Wow. They don't like prorate them like 75% of the benefits or something if they're no. part time. No, no, no part time. Wow. That was in education too. 
Oh, that is hard. That's a, that, that is hard to move. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it's very hard to come up with people with talent. Well, especially what I just said, like you can't you can't staff an operation like well, this but, without part timers. But yeah. um, also, though, I yeah. think you're you're presuming that if someone's full time, that they're working only nine to five. Yeah, if it's full time, it's just a number of hours, whether they're early or late right. or uh, you, combination. You can. Yeah, yeah, yes, it depends. So yes, the, the key thing is um during the overlapping times, if you have the full time range, um you do get sometimes you can get overlapping times where you might have too many, too many staff in the building. But um you can also start doing, you know, you can get creative with outreach, you can get creative with like mobile services, do Good. stuff to get them out, doing other stuff. If we're doing remote work, um there are super creative things you can do. But uh, that is a really interesting challenge um, for staff, and we need to make sure we capture yeah. that. If you add up the numbers, I think you're spending more money right. in uh, all this group. backup work. And also, when there isn't an aid here, the professional librarians are checking out books. Yeah. And so that loss of time, and you have very few people that are professional. It's very, that's, that is, that's really tough. Um, we uh, I can't imagine. I can't. I can't. Um, I have to look into that more because that starts recruiting. I don't know if that's the norm for all of California or if that's a South Pasadena policy. You mean no benefits? Yeah. I think it's a norm. Yeah. It's a norm. It's a norm. It's a norm. It's a state, yeah. state law. Yeah. Above eighteen hours, you have to provide. But you have to provide well, that. Let's provide them. Yeah. <laughs> cost. I, well, it costs to have people. You know, that, that's the thing that if there's a way of doing analysis of, of what's the cost of right. constant recruitment and training versus the cost of paying right. benefits to people that might stay long. Right. And especially mm -hmm. like if, you know, HR departments and municipalities, which are trying to hire positions for the entirety of the city. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, yeah. you all you all can be doing a recruitment and then send it to the HR. Yeah, they're black, always backed up, right? Because HR. they're backed up. They're they always. Have. Because so we have the same issues with rec centers, you right. have the same so issues with great. parks, Park anything. Right. I mean, there's a lot, any kind of operation that's seven days a week outside of normal business hours, you you almost always, as a best practice, have to have part timers in order to run it. So, yeah, that's a very interesting thing to look into. Thanks for picking up. Yeah. We well, just hear about all the recruitment that's just mm -hmm. ongoing. It's hard to be open seven days a week. And yeah, many yes. hours. And yes. it's just hard. And I don't think a lot of city staff maybe don't understand that. I mean, other than the police department, which is, right. you know, and fire yeah. staff in a different grade. Right? I mean, it's different. But um, yeah, it does take the part timers. Yeah. Very interesting. All right. Well, thank you. That's been great. Um, we have time for uh, we have time for a couple more, and then I want to use the last bit of our time to really talk about kind of next steps and go over this social pinpoint um, uh, outreach campaign. So, any other strengths or challenges, needs you want to make sure we're recording right now? And this won't be your only bite at the apple. There will be opportunities to get us uh, additional feedback. Well, we we need uh, major upgrades here, major uh, and the city and cannot. Pay for this. Okay. We need um, some kind of uh, effort to raise major funding and you know some donors or grants to uh, probably replace this building. Okay. Um, or do major upgrades and renovation. Yeah. I think that is a. Uh, you know, I think that's a theme we're hearing. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we need a concentrated foundation philanthropy uh, focus. Uh, but, uh, yeah, for for this for, for lots of things for major yeah. capital improvements. Major, yeah, for the city. Yeah, tech oh, and know. and facilities. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I agree. There's um, mm -hmm. I think we were talking about it a little bit earlier. Yeah, in the group. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, the, you know, the potential because this community, this is a community that donates money, right? This is a community that clearly is willing mm -hmm. to put money towards causes. Mm -hmm. And so if you give them the correct venue or vessel right. to actually donate towards an endowment for building repairs mm -hmm. or new buildings, 
um, if done correctly, if managed correctly, and communicated correctly, mm -hmm. um, it does seem on the surface that that this would be something the community would support. Uh, this, if you think it's possible to to, to get to some level, mm -hmm. uh, is there any uh, is there any talking about or planning for another space or land? I don't even know that. So yeah. I don't even know how yeah. that you know. is there a talk about that no, for another location. Sure. Yeah, for, no. for in the future. Like, you know, this is from 200,000, 200, 200 uh, households yeah. that come up. Right. So yeah. you, you may need to. Uh, yes, the then. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, we have a plan well, we'll, right here. Any talking about space? Mm -hmm. um, there's there was the history of the idea of the, of the city building a recreation center that the seniors would move and the library could take over the senior center mm -hmm. okay. footage. Mm -hmm. um, but then the rec center idea has been tabled for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So I think that that avenue, this idea that we're going to take over the senior center is much less likely than it used to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, because of that conversation that took place, I think staff has been taking for a long time about what are the options? What could we do with this building? What do we really need? Um, and in addition, in the 2000s, they actually, the friends, I think, paid for yeah, of course, yeah. um, uh, architectural, architectural yeah. proposal for renovating this building and like doubling all the mm. square footage. Wow. And I think that the thing about all of that is that if you increase the size of the building, you need more staff to run right. it. Right. So there's, there's just a lot of pieces to figure out. Mm. With, um, you know, with renovation and increasing the size. But yeah, certainly with the RENA housing requirements mm -hmm. and the developments we have right nearby, we're going to have more customers. There's going to be a lot of customers. And um, yeah, I don't know where we're going to put all of them. But I think that they kind of missed an opportunity when we were first examining this as their friends. It was just kind of a, a dream, but the school district did become available right across the street. Yeah. That building yeah. is empty now. And the, the friends, building. yeah, the administration building, the friends were saying, why don't we see if that could be purchased in the street closed up, the senior goes over there, the, the youth goes there, that whole the city, the city a lot of things, and we could expand. I mean, it was an mm -hmm. a missed op opportunity in my mm -hmm. well, But it's fun. It takes work to come from. Sure. Where's the money going to come from? Just a developer bought that. Is that a school? You say? Okay. Yeah, that was my school. elementary school. I went to school there. Elementary. It was school. But it was the school district. The school district. Okay. Put yeah. it over and it has this huge parking lot. I don't know if you saw it. It's oh my gosh, it, 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 it has the parking lot solution. I mean, yeah. you know. So that that has been bought by a developer and will be developed into multi-family. Is that one of the two yeah. developments? That's one, yeah. that's when is that supposed to start? I don't know. I haven't heard anything lately. Have you heard anything about that? Or lose all that parking. I don't think they even submitted. And the other development just down the street, just past where the farmer's market is on your on your left on El Tempo. Yeah. That's a big development. And then there's the senior thingy housing. Yeah. That's and then there's the Carol. 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 I mean, there's yeah. at least oh, and then there's the one that's right here. We're so, oh, yeah, and then, day, so there's five. Five. Yeah, so it's coming. We know it's coming. Yeah. And, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. And because it, look, from a pure numbers and capacity conversation, right? If more people are coming, more people will use this facility. And so, and it'll be not just any people, it's going to be residents, you know? And yeah. so, it, right. And so, you know, certainly it would seem to me that the strategic plan needs to be uh, aware, aware of changing populations and the uh the impacts that could have on future capacities i think certainly um a recommendation that just immediately comes to mind is going to be uh you're going to have to analyze uh metrics in order to really track capacity and to track utilization of services growth um because it's going to be a real a real issue and they're going to have to tell your story. I think they're going to be more likely to use it. It's not an apple to apple. Right. It was located somewhere else. Maybe they couldn't walk here, but this right. is all, they're all these developments well, you're describing are right here. Right here. So you're going to get more usage than mm -hmm. 2,200 households were right. two miles away. And it's beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. I know I know it has flaws. I know when you're inside, you see flaws, but th this is a beautiful building. Mm -hmm. And when people see it, and when it draws you in. So people are going to use this building. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to be good for time. Mm -hmm. um, I've got about 
six or seven minutes left here for you. And so I wanted to um, take time to talk about what's next. And so we're gonna continue to do these um, outreach sessions. Uh, we're gonna be coming up next, we're doing some one-on-one -on -one sessions with various city staff and community members. And then, uh, you know, and then we're gonna be launching this social media campaign. This is what it's called, Social Pinpoint. I have the end of the um, unshared oh, share. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> it's okay, it's hard when it's behind why, you. I was like, why is no one reacting to my beautiful social yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right, so now I'm going to share my screen here. All right, so this is Social Pinpoint. And uh, so this is the social media site that we are going to be launching here probably next week is what I'm guessing. And so this will be um, a, uh, this will be the main uh, resource we will use to both gather input from the community at large, as well as to communicate to the community at large. And so what this website is, is it, it's, uh, it's dedicated to South um, Pasadena Public Library. It has a survey that people can take. Um, click there and you can take a survey and we'll gather that input. And then it also has this join the conversation. So it's an idea board. And so you can come in here and you can post little sticky notes about all of these different themes, uh, general library services, community needs, accessible libraries, how do you connect with the library collections programs outreach and all And all of this information for about three weeks, we're really going to be pushing it out there. Uh, we've prepared materials to educate the public on it. We have bookmarks, uh, giant posters where people can write their comments directly on the poster and comment cards where people can fill it out. And then all of these resources have a QR code for um, that'll take you to this website in addition to us collecting it off that. So for about three weeks, we will be seriously gathering information from that. And then all of that information will then be collected, uh, synthesized, aggregated, all those things. And it will really help guide then the themes that we're seeing as we move to those next categories of this process. <clears throat> So that's what's to come. Uh, we will be back out here probably five weeks, five to six weeks, depending on uh, how long we're gonna run Social Pinpoint. During that time, we will meet with uh, the community uh, stakeholder group again, and we'll meet with the staff group again, and we will make progress in the plan. What, how, how accessible is this though? Uh, you know, physically, visually, uh, yeah. and in other languages? So, yeah. So um, let me go back. And I'll, we'll talk more about it. So it does have here where it can be powered by Google Translate. So okay. we can, uh, that, the advertisements we are putting out are in four languages. We've had them translated into Spanish, Korean, and Chinese. Uh, and we have the materials um, in those languages directing them to the site. In terms of, um, you know, physical, uh, the plan is not now to have the survey available physically. It's a 12 page document if we did it like that, but we do have comment cards specific to this that they can fill out specific comments. And we have the poster boards we'll put up in key areas where people can go. Um, it we, also- we said all of this have the QR code on it. All have the QR code. Go. Yep. And then the last thing for us in terms of accessibility, um, which is really important, um, mobile. Um, the website automatically has a, it has a mobile setting. So if you go to it on a mobile device, so it's, it's easy to read. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting because that's, there's a very large segment of the population that's their internet access is yeah. a mobile device. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then the other thing that I was concerned about it, uh, it's, it's pretty easily accessible because you, you wouldn't want a lot of people asking the staff for help. Right. And so it's pretty self-guided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is self guided. And if they need help, um, like I said, there's options for leaving comments. And if they're really struggling right. with it, um, library staff is here. Yeah. You know, I think this is going to. Oh, good. We just, it's oh, good. there you go. Yeah, it's really easy on the phone. Yeah, that's, okay. that's good because too often they're not. Uh, and even the survey side. Yeah. Really yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Hmm. You know, this kind of. Um, eliminates a lot of older people who aren't used to this. I think it would be great to have someone just at a laptop, 
you know, catching yeah, them at the senior center and just over it with them. Um, they either don't use cell phones sure. or they have, you know, I don't know what all. Yeah, are. it would be nice. Just to, generally yeah. challenged by the technology. Yeah, the yeah. QR code. You know, you you think, oh, they're so ubiquitous. Every must, everyone must mm -hmm. know. No, I no. was on a, a Zoom today with three people who are in their late sixties, and they do Zooms all the time. And I had to walk them meticulously through. How, I can't right. hear you. You need to do A, B, and yeah. C. Yeah. So there'll be a link, you know, from the homepage on the library's homepage banner. Will be a link to this page, so you don't. There'll be there'll be other ways to get to it. We have a short URL that's stop asking the CA .gov input matters. So there'll be some ways other than the QR code to get to this place. I have one question about this because this is something that we struggle with a lot with Measure L and everything else. What does success look like in terms of numbers <clears throat> on the for this? Responses? Responses. Yeah. You know, I don't know the answer, like what what it would look like. It it varies from community to community. So I will say this. This is not a statistically valid survey. Right. And so the expectation yeah. from the get go is that this is not going to get you that same level of accuracy that a statistically valid survey will give you. Okay. But what I can say is that um, what I can what I can also say is you really do reach a saturation point with these outreach processes where you you kind of aren't hearing too many new things, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if we get a couple hundred people responding to the okay, that's the answer. Yeah, a couple hundred. Sorry, yeah, I know I'm being long winded. Thank yeah. you. No, no, I, I appreciate the yeah. detail. I'm an analyzer yeah. too, but yeah. Um yeah. I, I would say between I would say if we can get at least a hundred, um, okay. and between one hundred and two hundred, I would consider that good. And okay. anything more than that, I would consider great. Okay. And uh, speaking of the seniors, uh, for the tap copy, it would be great if someone could take a tablet and go to the senior yeah. uh, on the day of events. Do some outlook. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, always two yeah. or three young folks. Uh, Sally loves to do that. Sorry? That <laughs> sounds interesting. Yeah, I can't believe we have a senior citizen yeah. committee that we can maybe reach out to. Mm -hmm. let's, and maybe, let's hit up Bill. And yeah. hit up, exactly. And let's hit them sit there with their. And, and you all hit the you have hit the nail on the we head. Like, tell your friends, the word of mouth, committee. get the word out there. The We're going to have these materials oh, okay. on next week. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. So you start giving them the foundation. Yeah. 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 But I mean, there's somebody of it. Yeah. If they have access, they do well, all that's the what they're, yeah. yeah. That's their job. Kind of. Hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. So yeah. we're at our time. I, thank you so much for letting us come and meet with you. Um, appreciate you coming. Yeah, we're, sure. Sure. Yeah, we're always accessible. If you have any thoughts or ideas, you can email us, call us, you can contact us. That is Kathy. a great idea. And also the social yeah. pinpoint will be live and we can put it on the social pinpoint. So, mm -hmm. so I, I would encourage all of our board members yeah. to you know, tell your friends, yeah. Yeah. especially given most of us are in that senior or range. If we tell our friends, they tell two friends and so on and so on. There will be friends that uh, have people think and the stick stack. So did you say this site will be, be ready right now next week? So maybe would, would we be able to have it published in our life, our, yeah, our newsletter that will come yeah. out on the first out August 1st? Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Okay, yeah, yeah it should be ready next week. We have a couple of things. I, I okay, we need yeah. to get the bookmarks printed. I want to, I need to write a press release that, um, make, make sure, with, the make sure Wisp is on team. We haven't put out the press release yet, but now that we have, because I was just saying that we have a 54 percent open rate of our newsletter, yeah. which we send wow. out around 744. So that's, that's like, really good. Good. yeah, that's really good. How yeah. long will it be open yeah. for? But also, let's, let's definitely get with make Sorry, sure this, uh, carries this How long will it be open for? When does it close the survey? I missed that so part. We, we need to talk. To, we we need to talk about that um, with Kathy. We had some input today from one of the sessions that it might be. You know, do we want to try to target closing it a little bit after school starts right. so we can reach people through school? Plus um, one, yeah. <laughs> so I'll talk with Kathy. But the most important part is we need it to close about a week um preferably a little bit more than a week before we come out here and work with you all on part two because it takes us about a week a solid week to really uh, process all that information and turn it into stuff we can work with well, we're gonna look at we're that gonna, timeline we'll miss a really big opportunity if we don't 
if we close it before August 11th, you know, school doesn't start. Yeah. School starts pretty early. So, and you think we need to keep it open until the 11th, Annie? I mean, least? past the 11th. The school starts the 11th. So at least a week after that. Yeah. That's just going to be a really big that hole. That's the yeah. feedback we've been getting. And like, honestly, they were, they were pushing for even further past yeah. the 11th. But, uh, you know, I think um, you only, uh, so the, it's interesting, right? Because you really only keep the enthusiasm for so long, right? right? So like, um, but it could be two bouts of enthusiasm. You know, you could do your push now, have three weeks really solid interest in it um, before, you know, you're going to lose that initial enthusiasm. But then you have a whole new audience coming in with the school yeah. that might give you more. So like I said, the community is the schools. The schools are the community. Yeah. Yeah. They're two separate things sure. that are the same. So the general community weighs in, then the school community gets yeah. a whole new so we absolutely could do it like that. So we could open it up, we could start pushing it, and then we could know that when school starts up, we're gonna get another influx of participation. Did Christiane indicate that she would send it out? Yes. She yeah, she really indicated, I mean, a ton of support. I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not mischaracterizing that. No, no, no they're, they're, yeah. they're very excited. I, yeah. I, I presented uh -huh. to district PTA and the, uh -huh. uh, the superintendent was like, you know, Dean, I'd really love to talk to you guys about working out a system where the, the, mm -hmm. the libraries of the schools and the live public library are integrated. The I'm library. just curious. Show me the money. money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you all. It's been okay. great. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, guys. I, I, feel, I feel much more confident in the process. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's a nice overview, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Methodology and yeah. what's yeah. happening. Really right? strong. Really yeah. strong. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy your grapes. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's such a treat. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, um, that was fantastic. Thank you, uh, Kathy, for making sure that we're able to do that. And I appreciate the flexibility of our board uh, and Sally Nellen to uh, to switch from last week to this week. Uh, if I can be so bold as to go on, we have our action discussion item. Uh, item three, minutes of the Special Library Board of Trustees meeting on June 9th. Um, did everyone get a chance to review those minutes? Uh, just give me one moment to let the gentleman out. Sure. They can find their way, they're big boys. Might be tripping over some stuff out there. Oh, yeah, it's not stress out there anymore. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's what I wondered. Yeah. Thank you. He said he, okay, great. So, um, does anyone have any uh, uh, amendments to the minutes? Okay, so can I get a motion? Uh, do I need motion? Yes. Yeah. Can I get a motion to uh, um, approve approve the minutes? Yeah, I move that the minutes of the uh, board of trustees meeting of uh, June nine. That's the special meeting. June nine. Special meeting. Special meeting. Yeah. Okay, I'll second. Yeah. Sean, can you get a roll call? Yes. Dean Serwin? Aye. Bianca Richards? Yes. Annie Chang Long? Yes. Kenneth Gross? Yes. FJ Pratt? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. So, um, so now we get to do the regular. Right. Meeting minutes. Did everybody get a chance to read those yeah. as well? Mm -hmm. Anyone have any comments, questions, adjustments? Can we get a motion to uh, approve the June 9th regular meeting minutes? Again, I move uh, that we approve of the minutes of the regular Library Board of Trustees meeting of June 9th. Okay. No corrections or edits. Can second? Because... I'm sorry, who, so who did the second? Uh, I did, Kenneth. Uh, thank you, Kenneth. Okay, Dean Serwin? Yep. Bianca Richards? Yes. Annie Chang Long? Yes. Kenneth Gross? Yes. FJ Pratt? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now we'll move on to parcel tax uh, renewal review. We, have, we should have had a vote last night. Yeah. Nobody bothered to 
send out an email telling us how it came out. I, I heard busy, it was good. Busy. I think going to three meetings. Public comment, yes. Pardon? Are, would you have public comments on this item, Sally? Are you? Uh, I can. Uh, you don't have to. I just thought maybe you, you had something. You did say earlier when I yeah. said you have public comment, you said not general. Yes, I could make public comment on um, this. Um, well, you could report on last night. Yeah, but, I will. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, all of the uh, members here, Library Board of Trustees, have endorsed Measure L, and all but um, one of the City Council members have endorsed it. Um, one is in Ireland, and um, and. It looks like we're moving forward. We're working on a donor letter. We have um, a lot of things going on. We're working on the argument. We have five people who, four people have agreed to uh, sign the argument. Um, John Primus, uh, Ellen, Dean, um, who is the other one? That one of them is Jitanjali. Mohindra, mm -hmm. but she um, we don't have her yet. Okay. And the other is um, Dean, Ellen, John. <laughs> yeah, it'll come to me in a minute. Yeah. That's, that's it. Okay, well, thank you for that comment. Um, mm -hmm. Kathy, do you have a, an update? Yeah, I just thought I would share. Um, so they did obviously. Um, adopt the resolutions so that the measure will be on the ballot. Um, the proposed, not proposed, but the language, the ballot measure question is okay. final. So I wanted to read that to you because oh, it please, changed please. Yeah. since we discussed. Um, okay. There was a, you know, I wanted to keep it very simple, but there was a sense that, yeah, because we were asking them to go a step yeah. beyond and approve it forever, that we should, um, but beef it up a little. So the question is to maintain funding for the operation and maintenance of the South Pasadena Public Library, including technology upgrades, resources for students, and programs such as family story time and summer reading, shall an ordinance be adopted extending South Pasadena's library special tax, which is due to expire on June 30th, 2024, to remain in effect until otherwise terminated by a majority vote of the South Pasadena electorate. That is the ballot measure question. I wish they had not included the date because that's going to make most people look at that and go, oh, we got another we got another chance with this. Mm -hmm. They're going to see 2024 and go, this is 2022. There's going to be an election in 2024. I don't know. I don't look at it that carefully. No, I think they're going to see the word library. A library and all the things that you just said about children, the reading, yeah. and they're going to say, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. So that is the ballot measure, but otherwise, that's really the only, that's all the news. You know, the the council adopted it, no no problem. Um, was, was there any but they, was there any comment? Uh, John Permis commented. Um, there was uh, Sally made a public comment, and John Permis, you know, just said that he pulled it so he could take show support to the committee. That's yeah, what he said. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I, so, appreciate, I appreciate that. that we're, we're good thing someone was there. The support with the council. Yeah. Yeah. At two in the morning or whenever they got around. Yeah, it's like 145. Yeah. I saw Michael in the morning because he'll be very happy. It was but... 147. It was mm -hmm. wow. It was terrible. I was joking when I said two in the morning. Are you serious? I no. was joking. It was 147. <laughs> oh, Sally, thank yeah. you for sticking around. No, I love oh, the night. Oh, my God. I thought you knew. <laughs> oh, no. What oh, you got more? It's crazy. <laughs> well, I know the peacock took up an hour at the beginning. Oh, right. my God. I got to tell you, there are five new babies on top of like the 12 that have already oh, have been oh, no. up the hill. But what took up so much more time at the city council meeting then? The housing element? The housing element, the peacocks. I don't even remember. It's like <laughs> yeah. a blur. Did they say we can shoot them? The electricity. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no, but they seem to be inclined to they, round them up and do something. Else. It is. There, the there's too many. There's well, too many. Many. Coyotes there's, are now, they're posting on like next door that they're being yeah. attacked by the coyotes. Yeah, I, I have a friend, yeah. friend in another community that also okay, has peacocks that he and his dog were, were uh, approached by a, a gang of four coyotes. Mm. So, so that won't happen here. We should probably let's move stay on. on the agenda and not mm. yeah, yeah. We, allowed to talk. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking about okay. anything. Uh, so uh, I think if there's nothing else, let's move on to the Library Board of Trustees work plan, item six, proposed schedule for policies reviews. Um, did everyone get a chance to see that? Yeah. 
it was excellent, I thought, um, laying it out and giving us the opportunity to, uh, to have things happen over a period of time. Um, how likely is it, by the way, what is CB? Those are the initials of staff. Okay. So that's me, Barb, Nana, Sean. Okay. And how likely is it that we're going to be able to stick to something close to this? I think we're going to be able to stick to something close to this. Mm -hmm. um, we spent a lot of time fussing with it and thinking no, about it and no. going over it. So it, it shows. I think that we can stick to it. But I mean, I you know, there may be times where for whatever reason we, we, we can't do it. You know, we're still down a full time staff person and are recruiting and, you know, we have a lot going on. But I, I you know, we we tried to be realistic when we wrote it so that we weren't putting something together that we couldn't stick to. I appreciate that. And I'll um uh so I'll, I'll reserve my comments for item eight. So that's all just for you guys to review that if you have any yeah. comments about it. Does anyone have any questions about that? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Item seven, library operations update, please. Yes, so I have just a short update. Um, summer reading program wraps up at the end of July. We have, I think, about 1,400 people registered nice. for summer reading. Yeah. That's up, right? You said before, I think you said 1,200, 1,200, yeah. 1,300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, and it's up from last year. Um, right. It's not as, as many as we would have had pre-COVID. Sure. Um, but it's also, you know, we have a new a new children's librarian. You know, we're we're operating a little differently because we can't, you know, cluster in the children's I'm room. Sure. So we're happy with those numbers. Um, yeah, we're happy with that number. Uh, we're going to be screening a documentary, Far East, Deep South, that's mm -hmm. going to be co-sponsored by the Friends and the South Pasadena Chinese American Club. They're helping to um, pay the honorarium along with the library. That is going to be July 29th. Friday, Friday, July 29th. Um, we're talking about putting together a program that's got a Ray Bradbury theme, um, hopefully with Tim Perry talking about the windows oh, yeah. um, and a filmmaker who has a film about a, a short film about an artist who worked with Ray Bradbury to create a work of art. So uh, we might put those two things together and that would be August 20th, which is a Saturday. Um, <clears throat> Dean mentioned we've been working with Spark to uh, co-sponsor a an author talk series that's kind of focused on um, not necessarily coffee table books, but it's focused on books that are, are, are have an artistic bench. So they're you know whatever whether it's visual artists or um, uh, musicians or whatever it may be. So the first one I. I think is tentatively scheduled for October 12th or 14th. I can't remember the date off the top of my head, but um, we're working on that and that would be like a series. So that would be something that happens. We'll see how many times a year it depends on Spark's capacity and, and the library's capacity. But the I think the, in, the vision is that it would be maybe quarterly. Um, so that would be nice to have an ongoing author um, series happening and doing it in partnership with another organization is great because that makes it a possible and b makes it likely that we'll have a decent audience. So that first one, we're we're thinking we're going to have to do invite only because uh, it's going to be event, right. Uh, yeah, because it's okay. going to be it's going to be way oversold. You think so? Okay, I told I told right, Sandy yeah. I didn't think so, but if you guys think so, we'll we'll do event right and take reservations. Um, let me make a note to myself. Well, the world famous musician was going to be performing as well as talking about his book. Mm -hmm. so, right, right. Is that under wraps who that person is? Uh, it's Leland Squire. Oh, oh, Leland Squire. Oh. He's a Pasadena guy. Leland, oh, yeah. I just saw him. And uh, his wife, Maureen. Yeah. I used to work for them. Oh, that's hmm. funny. That's funny. Yeah. So he has a book. And, a book yeah. Um, I wanted to mention, um, and Annie may be touching on this in her comments, but um, Annie, when we went through the list of accomplishments from the library strategic plan and the operation study, one of the things that came out was that um, there had been a recommendation to get feedback after we do programs. And I basically said, we haven't done it. <laughs> um, we just haven't done it. Uh, partly, you know, COVID came and we weren't doing very many programs. So we 
didn't ever really get to a point to launch it, but Annie thought that she could um, work with a student who might help us with that over the summer. Outstanding. Yeah, she ended up doing all the work herself <laughs> instead of the student. But Annie created a survey for us. So we have a, a Google-based um, survey and we've been using it for the last couple of weeks at programs and starting to get feedback. Um, I haven't looked closely at the data yet to see what people are saying. Um, I think we'll continue to use it through the summer and then the staff are going to regroup, look at the data and see if we need to make any tweaks to the survey because we'd like to do it again with um, One City, One Story programming um, and kind of see what we're finding out about that. But I also want to not confuse people with the survey we're about to ask them to take. Oh, so oh, that's we'll kind of point. wrap up this programming survey and stop doing it and then mm -hmm. launch the, the new one. Um, so that's fantastic because it's, you know, something we, we had on that list of things to do. And um, so thank you, a huge thank you to Amy for taking the lead and making that happen for us. Um, memory Lab, I'll give you an update on Memory Lab. So the Memory Lab, if you remember, was a grant that we got from the State Library to buy equipment to um, create a program where people can come in and digitize their analog media. Um, so Olivia has gotten, got all the equipment. She's written a beautiful guidebook about for the staff about how to run the program. Um, she had her first um, info session at the senior center this week. She's got another one coming up to try to explain to the seniors what it's about and then they can make appointments. So the first round of appointments are dedicated to the senior center folks as opposed to being open to the public. But if we don't get enough senior center folks, we might open it up in some other way. Um, but she's just raring to go and we have our first appointments booked. Um, we have an intern that was also funded by the grant, uh, although that money was in last fiscal year, so it's not really funded by the grant, but um, we have an intern who's gonna be helping with that. So that will be great because we'll actually be the one, you know, sitting and working with- Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Maybe a consistent. Yeah, and Olivia, you know, she's the, the mastermind, but she doesn't necessarily have time to, to yeah. sit through all those appointments. So the intern will help us through the summer with that. So we're really excited. Um, she did great. Um, she scheduled a number of drop-in sessions for staff to come in and view the equipment, see how the program works, read the manual, kind of just get an overview. So quite a few staff took advantage of that. Mm -hmm. um, so it may be that those staff end up being people who can help with the lab and who can work with work with people as they're digitizing. Um, so a little bit of cross-training there. And uh, lastly, I will just tell you where we are with recruitments. Um, the substitute librarian recruitment, we finished and made offers to, I, I wanna say two, maybe three substitute librarians. So those people are in the in the pipeline. Hopefully, you know the offer letter will be given, and then they have to pass their background check and whatnot. So we'll see. Hopefully, they all come through with flying colors. Uh, the adult digital services librarian; those applications um, deadline was, I think, July fifth. So we've just finished reviewing those, and I think we've selected eight people to interview. So hopefully, those interviews will be happening in the next couple of weeks, and we'll get moving on that. The support services librarian, which is the new position that we have funded this year, we may be able to fill that from the list that we have from the digital services recruitment, but we may not. It's a very different job. Um, it could just be that by chance there's someone in the school that happens to be, you know, interested in that other position. Um, but you know, we recruited for digital services, adult services, librarian, and support services is a totally different job. So um, we, we might get lucky and be able to recruit from the list, but if not, we'll, we'll have to re-host uh, and recruit for that, which in a way is fine because we um, we don't have anywhere for them to sit yet. We don't have the computer for them yet. Like, I mean, we're not really ready to onboard someone right this minute anyway. Um, we need to work a little bit on, you know, documenting what their duties are going to be and what their priorities are going to be. So that's the update on on recruitments. And that's all that I have. If you guys have questions, I'm happy to answer. Do you questions. want to mention an event happening on the 23rd? What am I, what am I forgetting? Um, a certain person is being honored by. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's like, who, what? 
Saturday. Yeah, so on Saturday, yeah. the, the, so you may remember <laughs> yeah, back in the day, <laughs> Bianca um, and Sally got together and nominated me for um, Assemblymember Holden's Woman of Distinction Award. And I'm one of quite a few women from the different um, cities that he, that he represents um, who was selected. So normally they do some kind of in-person event, but they didn't do it because of COVID, but they're doing, they're having an outdoor block party in Pasadena on Saturday. Um, and so that will be um, some kind of Is program. it gonna be the other cities too? Yes. Yeah. It's all the- all Are you, the, you're, you're gonna go, aren't you? You Yeah. 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 And it's and the, uh, the, the women of distinction is only from 12 to one. Yeah, or well, 12 30 30 is a 12 30 to one. 12 30 to 1. Yeah. So it's just, I'm assuming you, uh, you get on stage and they say your name and everybody claps. So yeah. That's it. Is that so, something you put on the Instagram? Uh, what, yeah. Somebody, would you? I hope so. Well, some, I'm sure the city will be taking. But the, please. Yeah. yeah. Sure will they be? Especially, there? especially when we're I trying to, to count on me. Tamara will be there. Oh, Tamara will be there. Oh, good. Tamara can take it. She just made a good point. Yeah. Well, well at, at the same time that we're pointing out to our citizenry the importance of the library, mm -hmm. I think it's excellent. Our victories. We point out that our librarian yeah. is being honored yeah. For, yeah. for this. Yeah, this which we did award. when it first came out, yeah. and we can do it again now that we have another reason to do who, it. Who was all going to go? We all got invited. Did you all get the invite? Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. yeah. It's a, a parking and transportation is very tight up there I don't know, on Jackson. Probably. On Jackson Street, she, she suggested parking on I think um, El Molino. El, El Molino, somewhere. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We so, might well, if we're only going to go for that little bit of time. We might want to carpool. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and go early because they said you need 15 minutes or so to yeah. walk from your car. Yeah, yeah. Let's sort of coordinate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, sorry, I, I wasn't uh -huh. trying to forget about it. I just <laughs> forgot about it. Yeah. Thank you. I've been running from meeting to meeting I to know. meeting. You do, you do an amazing job, which yeah. is why you're being honored. Anyone else have any other questions, thoughts, comments? Okay, let's move on to um, communications, uh, item eight, board president communications. Uh, well, since we're on topic, I want to congratulate you again and encourage the board to attend um, and carpool for more reasons yeah. than just parking. Uh, Annie, wow, I, I want to acknowledge not only the work that you did, but taking it up in the first place. That's fantastic. You, you've done us all proud. Um, and I want to, uh, uh, again, thank you, Kathy, for making this happen today. Mm -hmm. I feel much more, as I said, much more confident in the process. Um, now that I've seen uh, the, the people that are doing it and gotten a, a look under the hood. Right. So, yeah, it's been really good. You know, I've sat through the three and a half hours with the staff. <laughs> I sat through the friends. Yeah. I sat through part of the task force and now this. And it's just been a really, it's been a really interesting to see the themes coming up throughout. Mm -hmm. um, and they've just been doing a great job. And one last one, then we pass it along. Uh, again, Kudos for putting that list together. It shows that you took a lot of time to work on it. And I look forward to addressing each of those action items so that we can get some updates going since we told the, the city we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to get it underway. Thank you. Uh, so mm -hmm. item nine, uh, board communications, we'll, we'll start uh, with Bianca. Nothing to add. Same here. I was really impressed with that yeah. presentation. Yeah, yeah it, that, was, that was great. Yeah, me too. I mean, when we first talked about it, it seemed really ambiguous to me. It sure did, right. ambiguous, but now to yeah. hear the specifics yeah. really was, was wonderful. And then one other thing, and many of us were there, that, it doesn't have to be specifically library related, but the uh, the dinner we, mm. was for all the... Uh, oh, the commissioners. commissioners. Yeah, that was yeah, nice. How about that was really nice. nice. And I was, as you mentioned, Dean, I was surprised, almost shocked at the number of are commissions in the city of South Africa, they counting them in the books. And I think they're yeah, repeating right. this one. And not, even when they reduced a couple, 
and I guess it was Michael when he spoke said we have more than I don't know any oh yeah any of the five yeah. in California yeah. was yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing yeah and uh, everybody spoke so the well including Dean it was just really an impressive mm. event so well run it seems like most things in the city were I yeah. love that event because you really learn in just such a short amount of time what these mm -hmm. priorities are throughout the city and you it's very educational good way to make connection yeah and I, I'll take this opportunity to uh, again hang my head in shame for saying that Annie wasn't there when she was. Um, she says no, it's really she okay. Was, she <laughs> <laughs> so I was masked up, so it's easy to not. Yeah, you know. have any comments? Uh, I was just going to say, um, you know, thanks, Kathy, for uh, again taking the time to work on the survey with me. I'm a big data person, so I was excited to. Oops, am I frozen? Nope. No, no, you're you're fine. Fine. Okay. <laughs> to get to do that. Um, I did want to just say, Kathy, um, if you pass on um, our thanks to the summer reading volunteers, they are just lovely, super helpful, and um, just so mature for young people and just um, great with really young kids. And I think it's a great experience for them. I'm trying to encourage more kids to look at doing those volunteer experiences, but um, I want to pass on our thanks to them. They get, they get service hours for that, right? Of yes, course. they do. You know, that, and that brings up, thanks, Annie, for reminding, you know, it's been lovely that they've been sitting here at the mm -hmm. front, um, and they're, they're uh, very visible, and uh, they're very appropriate, and I went up there and asked questions, and it, it was, they explained, and they were very patient to show you how to do it. Um, so yeah, it was, yeah, that's great. It was very good. Thank, Thank you. And oh, yeah, and I like it that they're very visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely been different this year, not having them in the children's room, but we did that on purpose because we can't be congregating in the children's room. <laughs> so we'll see if we, if but we, you know, that front area is very conducive to that. Kind of yeah. It was so great. Yeah. 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 You guys like it. Well, that's good to know because yeah. it's definitely something Visibility. we're not sure about, but so if it's been, if yeah. you've liked it, that's good to no. know. Yeah. I think that it helps us recruit adult readers. Yeah. Um, we recruited quite a lot of adult readers as well. Outstanding. Yeah. Um, so our council uh, liaison is not here, so mm -hmm. I'm going to turn it over to friends of the library representative. I'm going to step out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we um, typically do not have a July meeting for the friends, but uh, we did meet today to go over the strategic planning group. And um, I thought it was really, really good, very productive. And I really look forward to uh, being able to take the survey and, and share that. The friends will um, uh, be having a one day retreat um, and that will be on August 18th. And it's gonna be from nine to four and it's at the Meltmore Gill. And I know it's the Gill home of Teresa and Mario Molina. So uh, that's uh, in, the, in the works. I'm really excited that after, what, since February, um, uh, I met with Jericho Road and oh, the person that's oh, yeah. going to help us that was yesterday, um, maybe redo our website. So we're not going to redo the web. It's going to stay the same mm -hmm. um, website. Where it, she just says that's just too much work to try to develop something new, but mm -hmm. she's very hope. This is what she does. This woman that's volunteering, um, she has her own business that we can um, completely make it have a new look. Mm -hmm. uh, she was finding embedded links there and she can help me with forms mm -hmm. so that we don't have to like go out into donor snap and um, she doesn't like Google and that's probably why oh. we're struggling with this, but um, she's going to help us put together a user handbook. Oh, nice. So I have been my marching orders and we have a deadline and hopefully by the end of August, we'll have kind of a revamped look oh, to good. it. Yeah. So yeah, so I'm really excited about yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so as you know, our bookstore is celebrating its 40th anniversary and to help celebrate this milestone, we um, they came up with the idea of having a memorial fund to honor our four founders. And so that was established. Um, those founders are Sally um, Swan, Dorothy Cohen, Margaret Wallace, and Debbie Wigler. So we've already had a number of donations made to that. So that will go into the memorials for general use um, for the library. Um, they're also going, or they made coupons. So if you went to go to the bookstore and uh, one free book was for the last, last chance bookstore. So you could get that. And and I think because of Sally, she um, was <laughs> so good. I may have already reported on this, that uh, they, the book drive was a massive success. So they, I don't know oh, if they yeah. need any more books. <laughs> and um, and they're hard, they were really busy putting them out on the shelves. And then, and if you haven't done so, um, 
you know, it's in our newsletter, it's on our website, check out our monthly um, auction, book auction yeah. that is, uh, you can see the items that are on sale and they're also down in the, in the mm -hmm. book cases, mm -hmm. the glass case down there. Um, so for the last membership for the last two months, um, we made $1,684 uh, $1, in donations. We have, but this has actually changed. We have um, 189 members. So this so far, this year we have raised twenty five thousand eight hundred six dollars. Wow. Outstanding! It, it is amazing. So one of the reasons that number has changed is that we sent out reminder postcards, and if you hadn't joined the friends, or maybe if you didn't, it was a mistake. Um, you got a postcard, and we sat here at a meeting, the last meeting, and, and we we wrote hand little notes. Oh. Um, to date, we have four thousand two hundred and sixty uh, two. $4,265 that have come in from those postcards. That's wow. amazing. And in the past couple of years, our past membership didn't want to do it because they said it wasn't worth the cost. So, oh, um, like it is. so yeah. yeah, so I'm pretty Great. excited about that. Um, and then I, um, <laughs> Sally's doing a great job and, and the communication, mm -hmm. um, I think with all the things that she has on her plate, we're going to scale back a little bit, mm -hmm. but um, it, we'll still have lots of communication. Um, I'm the VP of operations on top of being the, uh, the president. So I thought it was really fun to look at our statistics and and some of the things that we don't think about with Facebook is the highest amount of hits that we got basically was um, the restoration concerts oh. and and our December book sales. So um, the concerts in January got 518 hits and in the May concert got 438. That's a lot of likes. Mm -hmm. for for just mm -hmm. our little group and the bookstore in december had 757 wow so these are pretty pretty big numbers um it's very interesting about the demographics that a lot of the 30 percent was from alhambra and the average mm -hmm. range is from 56 to 64 and they're women mm -hmm. so uh and 93 percent come from the united states and our last newsletter as i mentioned 744 were sent out with a 54 percent open rate that is huge, actually. Right that. So, I uh, mentioned about the piano. The piano is just no longer working, but they understand that it doesn't have good optics, and we're not going to spend two hundred thousand on a piano. So they're still working on plans. What they're going to do? Maybe rent one. Um, I don't know. Um, we'll see. I'm going to ask them to check the contracts. And so the and also their concert series now has been published. It's online. The, the series is $136 for actually eight concerts, but there's nine concerts on the flyer because one's a, one's a makeup. One's a makeup. Yeah. yeah. So basically that's yeah. my report. Thank you so much, Ellen. You, you're always so um, thorough. And you know, one thing, my earliest memories of this library were that case and the book option and going. Those look cool. I know. How, where do these come from? Yeah. Well, now I know. Um, trustee liaison. Sorry. I'm well, I didn't. Report. I didn't. Well, cause we didn't have the. We meeting. didn't have a meeting. But but I I'll I'll echo what Ellen said. Uh, I I go to the bookstore a lot, and that coupon really is kind of fun because you get that coupon, and then you come downstairs mm -hmm. and you get you get a free book. And I think mm -hmm. they're trying to track it. From the notes so to see if they get like repeat customers or whatever. Okay. So, I don't great. bother tracking it, but uh, and I apologize that I cannot go on Saturday. I had a dear, dear friend <laughs> pass away in her Perfect. memorial in Visalia that day, so I'll be driving to Visalia. Don't worry about it. There's plenty of people showing up. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. Speaking of which, our fearless library director. I have nothing else to add. Well, thank you. It is. Uh, it's kind of interesting that because we have you like right before we do these communications, you're giving us an update. So I guess if, if something gets triggered for you during, well, or sometimes time. I have things that aren't library operations, you know, announcements about something city related. Um, so yeah, that's um, why we keep I it think, on there. Um, as a, as a quick aside, um, the knowing that we have Olivia, who is such a great historian of town, um, a, a question came up and, and I posed it to her and she's going to be hopefully able to answer it. Yeah, hopefully, she told me that. Hopefully in the negative. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, but that's just another aspect of the resources that we have here and the unique mm -hmm. resources that we have 
of such a broad base of services in such a small community is, mm -hmm. is really wonderful. So with that, unless anybody has anything else, I'm going to kick us out of here at 8.47. Okay. All right. So we give me one on? moment. I will turn off the recording. When is our next meeting? August 11th? August, August 11th. August 11th. Okay. Yeah. And, and on August 11th, just, just for 